Okay, welcome. This video is going to cover some drawing skills that we would cover in S1 CDT. The drawing skills we're going to cover are freehand sketching, 2D shapes, but I'll learn to apply some color, isometric sketching, and two point perspective sketching. What is you see on my page, as I've already added the border in my work, this is just for neatness. I've used a ruler and it's about half a centimeter, so that's five millimeters in from the edge. Because we're going to do four, sketch, uh, four skills, what we're going to do is split this paper up into four. So I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to fold it across in half this way and in half this way. If I open back out, you'll see that we've got four rectangles, one for each skill. The first skill we're going to look at is something called freehand sketching. I'm just going to add a title here. Now freehand sketching is a skill where we learn to draw straight lines without the use of a straight edge. For example, something like a ruler. For the skill, we want to remember four techniques. These are as follows. First of all, we want to make sure that we're sitting up straight on our desk with the elbow slightly off. We should be able to put a hand underneath where our elbow is, but please make note that this part of the hand will always be touching the table. We also want to make sure that the hand does the same thing each time. For right-handed people, that usually means your hand moves in an angle this direction. If you're left-handed, it usually means in this direction here. When we're drawing, we also need to remember to do things like turn the paper to draw the shapes and also to look at where you're drawing to. One of the tips is to move your arm as you're drawing, not to flick your wrist. If you have your elbow on the desk, what happens is it turns into a big compass. Or well, likewise, if you flick your wrist, really good for doing curves, but not so good for doing straight lines. So you want to move your arm as best you can. To start by sketching, what we're going to do is start by drawing two small dots on the page. The idea is we're going to join these dots up with a straight line. So I'm going to sit comfortably. I'm going to have my elbow off the desk sitting up straight. This part of my hand sitting on the desk. I've removed the paper just now. My hand's going to do this movement each time. So what I need to do is I need to turn the paper around so that it lines up with that movement. So my hand's going to do that movement there. I'm going to sweep my hand across and then I'm going to start to draw. When I draw, I'm going to put my pen down and look at the second dot and move my arm out of the way. Okay, remember this part of the hand touches the paper. So I'm going to sweep my hand across, line the paper up, pencil down and draw. I can then challenge myself by making these dots further apart. And further apart again. And again. And so on. Now I'm going to do a deliberate mistake on this one. One of the common things that happens is this. So you start to draw your line, but you haven't lined your paper up correctly. So what happens is you subconsciously draw a line like this. So it's straight, but then starts the curve. And it's doing that because as you're going across, you realize that you aren't going to line up with your dot. So you make the end meet. So just be aware that you follow the four techniques on this one. That's freehand sketching. The next skill we're going to look at is applying these skills in freehand sketching into drawing 2D shapes. For this technique, we're going to just focus on rectangles. We're going to draw three small rectangles in this space just about here. In this space across here, we're going to do something called a tonal scale. And that's going to be for when we add on the color. The two main things we want to uh, focus on here are learning about guidelines and overlapping corners, open corners, and making sure lines are parallel. Last of all, we also want to finish our drawings off with outlines. 
So guidelines, these are lines that are really light. To do that, you want to drag your pencil. Now I'm drawing a pen so it shows up in the camera, but you want to drag your pencil so they're nice and light. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle shape at the top here. I'm going to draw a line, so I'm turning my paper, remember my tips from before. Hand does the same thing each time. I want to draw a light line across this way. Just pretend that line's light, obviously I'm drawing in pen. I then want to move my hand down and draw a line that's parallel to this. Now a parallel line means that the distance between them will be the same. The lines will never touch. So I'm going to start by sweeping my hand across this line, moving it down a little bit and drawing another light line just here. I then want to turn it round and do two lines in this direction. I want to try and get the corners to be right angled, so I'm making sure my paper is lined up to allow that to happen. And I'm going to do a technique of drawing with the corners overlapping. Overlapping. What I want to then move on to doing is using outlines. And the outlines are darker lines. And to get an outline, I want to have my pencil switched straight up and down. It gives a nice dark finish to it. So I can now go back across and darken the shape. Remember the good practice of turning the paper. Which gives a nice, clean, crisp shape. I want to do the same for two more rectangles. Again, I'm going to use the outlines, pencil vertical. To darken the shapes in. So 2D shapes. Again we're trying to remember the techniques we've learned in freehand sketching about making sure we sit up straight with the elbow off the desk, we turn our paper and we move our arms to get a nice straight line. We're now going to do a tonal scale across here and this is us going to start to add in some colour. So tonal scale we're going to draw five boxes. First of all we're going to draw a large rectangle. Again, remember to turn the paper. I want, I would like five boxes. What I'm going to do is split this into four though, just to get the boxes even. So I'm going to divide that by two. The top box here, divide that by two. The bottom box here, divide that by two. And to get the fifth one, I'm going to add this box on the bottom. So I'm going to extend these lines here and make a box the same size. I want to number these going from five at the top. Four, three, two, one. Now tonal scale, well the first thing we need to discuss is what is tone? Tone is the strength of colour in this case. From this one coloured pencil, we'll be able to get five different tones. A dark, and then lighter tones all the way through to the lightest tone where we've got number one here. When we use our pencil, First thing we need to do is make sure that the tip of it is nice and sharp. Okay, so I've got a sharp-ish pencil here. If it was fairly blunt, we wouldn't be able to use the side of the pencil. And one of the things we want to do when we're rendering is, which means adding color, is to use the side of the pencil. Okay, if you use the tip of the pencil, what happens is you'll get lots of lines shown up in your work and it'll look quite scribbly. By using the side of the pencil, you won't get those lines. And because the side of the pencil here is about four or five times longer than the tip of the pencil, you will work four or five times quicker. What we're going to do is we're going to add some colour to this, to this tonal scale. I'm going to hold the pencil on its side like this. First thing, I'll, the, my tip is to put it down on the table, put the hand across the top and pick the pencil up between those two fingers here with one finger on. I don't like to hold it near the end. Hold it so it's comfortable. I actually hold mine with that part against my hand here, that against like that and finger on top. This finger on top is so I can push down to make it darker or take the pressure off to make it lighter. So I'm going to start by rendering these, so that means colour, render, these boxes nice and lightly. Notice what I'm doing with my left hand. So I'm using the side of my pencil, I'm not really pushing at all, just letting the colour of the pe colour pencil just, just touch the paper and no more. So I'm colouring all the boxes, five, four, three, two, one nice and lightly. 
And then I'm going to go back and colour 5, 4, 3 and 2 this time, missing out box number 1. And what's going to happen, it's like a second coat of paint. We are going to add a little bit more colour. To the work. I'm then going to do 5, 4 and 3 this time. Again, what it's going to do is make 5, 4 and 3 slightly darker. Again, 5 and 4. And finally, number 5 on its own. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that we've got five different tones. If you squint to your eyes, you should see five different tones there. My left hand was using, or I, the purpose of my left, my finger on my left hand was to keep within the lines to make it a little bit neater. You could use things like a ruler to put against the edge, or even another pencil if you like. What I need to do now is colour these boxes here so it looks like a five, a three, and a one. My technique here is I'm going to render colour one side, this is going to be number five, pushing down with pressure, trying to match this colour here. I'm colouring three quarters of the way through my work. I can then turn it round and do the other side to make it neat and tidy. I can then do number three, so I'm trying to match this tone here. And last of all, we're going into the last box to look like number one. And again, I'm trying to match this tone just here. There we go. So by doing this, we've learned how to create a dark, a medium, and a light tone, which we'll then be able to apply to some 3D sketching later on.